What's going on folks? Welcome back to the January edition of the monthly uh, video of the house that never sleeps and what's going on behind the scenes. Uh, not a lot's going on. Today's uh, January, what is the date? The 4th or 3rd? 4th. Today's January 4th. And I figured I better get this video made. I haven't been uh, making many videos lately. been doing a lot of guitar repair work and uh, some banjo work and a well violin work worked on an acoustic bass for a guy had a crack in it and a, it was uh, some braces coming loose and a crack in it sealed that all back up and glued the braces back got it all working I've been working uh, on an electric guitar the guy gave me he wanted to remain anonymous the guy donated a whole bunch of stuff to this channel and a lot of stuff man and uh, we were good friends and then all of a sudden he just up and left and uh, to this day I don't know what happened to him he didn't say goodbye he didn't say I've got COVID he didn't say anything he just up and, and left man and I mean this guy donated a lot of shit good stuff good expensive stuff he didn't want his name said so I'm not going to say it but I'm going to try to find out what happened to the dude I found a phone number that might tell me something. Anyways, went and got the uh, uh, booster shot the other day, me and my wife did. We took our first dose of Moderna in May and the second dose in June the 28th, I think, was the second dose. And they say you're set for six months. So in December was our six months out after the two doses. Neither one of us got sick, didn't have any problems whatsoever, anything. Went, uh, I think it was the 28th of December, and got her booster shot. Her and me both did, and her mom. And uh, we were sick as hell, man. I mean, it hit us. They say the booster is like half of the dose you take the first time. That's what I've always been told, and I read that. Half of the dose you take the first and second time. The booster is only half of that. Well, I don't know, man. Something was sure different. My wife and me both was sick as hell the next day. Uh, we got that booster on the 28th and the 29th and even the 30th, two days after after getting the booster. We were both kind of sick, you know. It's okay, Lily. Lay down there, baby. Yeah, hold on. Uh, it was totally different from getting that first, the first two shots. Totally different. The booster was totally different. It's the same Moderna, they said. But they're supposed to really be protected now from the, the COVID thing. I don't know. They say you're more protected after the booster than you are after, you, you know, when you first take the first two doses. I'm talking about Moderna here, and I don't know about anything else. I do know J&J's totally different. Uh, Pfizer is a lot like Moderna. You're not as much protected from what I understand. But I don't know, man. They don't have enough data really to know their cells, you know what I mean? Anyway, it's got a surprise coming for you guys, man, and you're going to learn about it first right here because you pay it for this tier <laughs> to see what's going on behind the scenes. A while back, you, you know, I lost my mom and it just been, it's been hell, man, trying to deal with that. I told my wife, I said, I need something to put my mind into, you know, to occupy my mind. And she said, well, she said, that she remembered how I used to play the banjo all the time, all the freaking time, man, as much as 18 hours per day. She said, you ought to get back into the banjo. That seemed like it occupied your time really well. And I'd been hearing about these gloves with the fingertips cut out. So I ordered to see it. I thought, you know, try it, man. People with folk with a say it changed their lives. So, I ordered a pair of them. I've just got one on here now, but I've got a pair. Actually, I bought three pair. By the way, my, my daughter's, my wife's mom, who also got the uh, booster shot, it didn't, she didn't get as sick as me and my wife did. She's 91, 92 years old, 91 years old. She didn't get as sick as me and my wife did. She said she felt funky for a couple of days. But we, we, we were sick, man. We didn't just feel funky. We were sick. Anyway, on with the news. I ordered three sets of these gloves. 
three pairs of them. Okay? My wife said, you gotta, you gotta maybe think about the banjo. That seemed to always occupy your mind quite well. I said, you know, that's a good, a good idea. And I'd heard about these clubs, so I ordered them. Got my banjo out one day, and uh, that first day was uh, fumbly, man. I could, even with the gloves on, I couldn't hardly play a note on it, you know. But I knew it was going to be that way. I mean, I'm still 33 years lacking in practice. I'm 33 years behind in practice, so I haven't played it for 33 years. I'd pick it up once in a while and just screw with it a little bit, put it back in the case, and it'd be another... 5, 10, 15 years before I got it out again. Wasn't very many times I got it out. Couldn't play. My hands were screwed up. I could not play. And you know, I started losing uh, my ability on the banjo years ago. 30, 33 or more years ago. They didn't even know what focal dystonia was back then. They didn't know it even existed. And you know, I had no way of knowing it. But I knew something was wrong with my hands because like I say, I'd play 8, 10, 12, 15, 18 hours every single day, man. That's all I did was play the banjo. I got really good at it, and then I started getting worse at it. And it didn't seem to matter how much I practiced, how long. Things that were easy for me to do on the banjo before got hard to do. And, uh, you know, I didn't know what was wrong. I, I didn't know. Now I've got rheumatoid arthritis and focal dystonia, and they know about all this stuff now. Anyways, the gloves, from what I can tell, it just very slightly changes the resistance of when you open your hand. Look how steady that is. Look how steady, man. It changes the resistance of when you open your hand or close it. Right there is not, you know, not using it at all. Before I could do that right there and I'd shake so fucking bad or even start to open it a little bit and it just shakes so bad man that difference in resistance ever so slight difference in resistance makes all the difference in the world it's unfreaking believable I, I can't believe it I got these gloves got the banjo out the first day it was in December it was about the first week or second week about, about middle of December and I was, I was rusty man I mean I I could hardly play anything at all and it's a bitch. When you know the banjo neck the way I know it, and you've played it for 30 plus years, and you know all those notes and chroma chromatic and melodic scales and uh, melodic versions of old fiddle tunes and stuff, and you can't play them. You know them in your head, but you can't get your hands to work. And it's just so depressed. It changed my life, man. Well, I think these are going to change my life yet again. Only for the better this time. Hopefully it'll be for the better. So I got the banjo out like mid-December. Started screwing with it every day. Just, to, you know, half an hour, hour. And within the first four or five days, I could tell these are going to make a huge difference, man. Eventually I'll have uh, videos, put videos and stuff up. My grandson took up playing the banjo a few months ago. And I gave him a banjo, and I, I'm, I couldn't believe how good he is already. Already. I mean, just no longer he's been messing with it. He put on his uh, Christmas list last year, a year ago, not this past Christmas, the one before that. One of the things he wanted was a banjo and to take lessons from his pap. And uh, I couldn't give him, I gave him the banjo, I couldn't show him anything because I absolutely could not when I picked the banjo up my hands just drawled up like that I couldn't do anything I couldn't show him anything I tried to tell him a few things you know but I couldn't actually show him anything and I told him this year at Christmas time I said maybe about February you want to have one more uh, Christmas present coming that was on your list a year ago that I couldn't give you then I think I'm, maybe I'm going to be able to give it to you now I'm going to take this off but it makes all the difference in the world from what I can tell. I'm, I'm getting to where I can actually play again. And uh, I won't say better than I could before I quit yet. Who knows? Maybe that'll happen eventually. But I'm, at least I'm getting back to the point where I can play again, you know. And I have missed that, man. For 33 years I've missed it. I, I had some really good times with my dad. We played music together when I played banjo a lot, you know, some good friends, man. And I lost that. I never, I couldn't play with them anymore. 
I took up the guitar and started playing it. That's weird. On the guitar, my left hand is the one that gives me fits. Getting chords, it just wants to squeeze so tight, man. You know, I can, I can play, but I haven't tried the gloves on that yet. On the banjo, it's the right hand. It's, it's getting those three fingers to work right. It's weird. It's just weird, you know. That many years ago, like I say, did it, no one knew what fuck with Estonia was or that it even existed, you know, 33 years ago. I just knew something was wrong with my hands, man. They hurt. They drawled up, and you know, really tight, and they shake like a son of a bitch you've seen. I've made videos, showed you guys how I sh shook, shake, still do. With that glove off, <laughs> you can see. That's so weird, man. It, yeah. If I put apply a little bit of muscle, opening my hand or closing it, that's what happens. And you just saw how how stable was that glove on. All it does is just change the resistance a little bit, either direction when you close your hand or when you open it. What's the matter, cue ball? Bev's coming. She'll be right back. She went to the store. That's why I keep looking out the window for her. I have to go help her carry in groceries when she gets back. Anyway, so I'd make you guys this quick video and fill you in on that. There'll be videos coming on that on YouTube, public, publicly, <laughs> if I can say it. As soon as I can get, you know, where I can play a little bit better. Well, actually, a lot better. Like I say, this the gloves work, but I'm still 33 years behind in practicing, you know. And you're not going to make that up in a month, man. Like I told my grandson, I said, it'll be February or March or, you know, before I can give you, the, I didn't tell him what gift it was. I want to surprise him and send him a video of me just playing, you know. And now I can show you stuff on the banjo that you wanted a year ago on your Christmas list. Hopefully that's the way it works out. That's my plan. That's the plan anyway. So I hope you guys had a wonderful Christmas time and a happy new year. I hope 2022 is good to you and your family and all, your, all of you that, uh, that watch this video thank you for your support here on patreon that means a lot i know man i've been slacking a lot i haven't been i've been slacking on youtube big time youtube too. look at the, look at the, the my bigger channel look at it man i put a video up there sunday today's tuesday i think it was sunday i put a video up that would have been uh the second i think of january and i don't know and 24 hours or something, it had like four comments on it. I think the last time I looked, it had six comments. That's all. And 200, it had, I believe, 284 views on that video. I mean, what the hell is YouTube doing, man, to kill that channel? I don't know. But I know they're killing it dead. I put one video up on there a while back. And I put the same video on my new channel, the little one. And the little one had just about twice as many views and way more comments than the big channel had. I mean, what, I think I have like 56,000 subscribers on the bigger channel. They must have all died or something. I don't know. Or, or YouTube's not notifying them. I don't know what the hell's going on. I just know they're kill YouTube is killing it dead as 4 o'clock, man. The little one's doing okay, I guess, for a little channel. That's what it is. It's little, but it's doing, you know, it's doing way better than the big one, but the big one still gets more traffic than the little one because it's bigger. But it ain't getting no 56,000 subscribers worth of traffic. I don't know. I'm going to get back into this thing. It's been tough getting over losing my mom, and you all know about my wife got sick. Ever since September, whenever she first got sick and man the dominoes started to fall then and they continued to fall up into December so now like I say it's January the 4th maybe things will uh, I don't even know the word man I'm so friggin tired of all this shit that's been going on just like I said it's like dominoes falling man just non-stop until they are all down you know and they're pretty much all down right now I mean, man, I've had a really tough time. We've all had a tough time dealing with losing my mom, though. I mean, 
the last day I saw her alive, I asked the nurse over there, I said, did she eat anything at all? she wake up long enough to eat? And he looked at a paper booklet thing he had there. He said, as of right now, it's been six days since she's ate anything. And I said, Jesus Christ, man, that's you're starving her to death, you know? He said, you can't get her awake long enough to eat. She woke up that day when we was over there. She heard my voice and woke up. And uh, I, I never said anything for, till after she died and was in her grave. I told my wife one day, I said, you know that day we was over there and she woke up. She tried to talk. But when she opened her eyes and looked at me, I could see, I could just see death in her eyes. I could see, I was looking face to face with death. And I knew it, man. At that very moment that it happened, she got choked, I think, too, and that, that kind of helped wake her up, but I don't know if it was that or my voice or what. They said, you know, she wouldn't even wake up long enough to eat. And, you know, like I told my wife, I said, well, you know, I understand they have other patients over there, but how, long, how much time are they going to put into getting her awake to eat, you know? They're going to wake her up, try to get her woke up, and maybe get a bite in her, and she go back to sleep, and that will go on to the next patient. I understand they have other patients they got to take care of. But I also understand they wouldn't stick with her and try to keep her awake long enough to eat like we would, someone in the family would, you know what I mean? And uh, I think basically they starved her to death, that's what I think. The day, the last day when I was over there, like I say, she was asleep, she woke up and uh, looked at me and tried to talk. And I could just see death in her eyes, man. Just, I mean, it was like I'd never seen her eyes before. But uh, then she went back to sleep. She didn't have no rattle in her lungs. What do they call that? Death rattle? Whatever. She never had that. Her breathing was clear, man. Uh, her blood pressure and everything was good. And, uh, you know, I can't help but wonder if she didn't starve to death. I can't help but wonder that. Just because she couldn't stay awake, you know, and they didn't spend the time needed to keep her awake long enough to feed her or, you know, get nutrition in her. I don't know. Maybe maybe it doesn't maybe it's not that, you know. I don't know how long it takes a human being to starve to death at ninety one years old, but I imagine about a week, you know, depending on the, the condition you're in probably has a lot to do with how long you're going to live if you don't eat or drink or anything. Like I say, they would not spend the time with her that a family member would have spent trying to keep her awake and get her to eat, you know, get food in her. And I, I don't know, I'll probably never know, but I think they may have starved her to death, that's what I think. They just, uh, they didn't put the time in, keep her awake long enough. I'm not blaming anybody, she was 91 years old, anything can happen. Hell, anything can happen at any age. You know, you don't have to be 91. If you live to be 91, you've been lucky you got that long. I don't know. Anyways, uh, it's been tough, man, getting over that and getting through it. We missed her this Christmas. It was just terrible having a Christmas without her. You know, she was the one that always made Christmas for everyone. You know, I'd go up and get her and bring her here every Christmas. Years and years ago, when my kids were tiny, we used to go to her house for Christmas every year. And she got so old she couldn't drive and stuff anymore. Then so I'd go get her, you know, and bring her here at Christmas time. It was just so weird not going after her this year and her not being here, you know. It's weird every day thinking she's not here. She's not with us anymore. All right, enough of my whining. Watch for banjo videos as soon as I get it down. It's, it's going to be a um, month or a few months probably at least a few months before I get it down but I'll get it I, I think we'll be able to do it with those gloves I can feel all the difference in the world and you know it's amazing I can play at all man at all considering I haven't played for 33 plus years I have not played the banjo for 33 years since my dad died in 1988 I was having big trouble then with it. And when he died, I just said, piss on it. I didn't have any reason to play music anymore. You know, that was my thoughts. So watch for banjo videos. Uh, more guitar repair videos coming. Things are, I hope things are going to pick up now that all this is behind us. Hopefully, everything will return to normal now and we start making videos again. 
And uh, I thank you guys, man, for keeping it here through all this. You guys are like brothers and sisters, man. You're like true family, just like true family members. And I love you guys, man, from my heart. And I thank you. I like to know what happened to the guy that donated all this stuff that he did. I'm going to try my very best to find out because he was like a brother, too. I mean, we talked on the phone. You would not believe, man. You wouldn't believe the, the guitars he gave me. A lot of them that's been in contests came from him. Uh, the Fender Twin amp that I have, he gave me that. I've got that other little tiny amp. I forget what it's. I always forget what it's called. It might be a Fender, too. He gave me that. And, you know, just thousands of dollars worth of stuff the guy donated to the channel. And I need to find out what happened to him, you know, if he's if he's pissed off or if he's sick or if he died or what happened, you know. And I feel that way about every one of you guys that's watching this video that pays on this tier. Now, everyone on Patreon, you know, it's different. You guys are special because you, you go the extra amount for this tier to get the behind the scenes stuff, which is what this video is. And one a month, every month, as long as I'm able and can do it. So I thank you so much from the heart, man. I appreciate you guys, and I wish you the very best for the new year and every year to follow. All right, I got to go carry groceries in. See you in a month. Cheers. Thanks for watching.